suggested that the trenches like the Mariana Trench were consistent with rapid drainage and we noted that the sea volume is 18 times the land volume and therefore it didn't require very much adjustment for the water to come off the land. We looked at the reality that the earth is on an inclined axis and that the earth has an elliptical orbit around the sun and suggested that the fly past or impact of a space object could easily have twisted the earth on its axis and adjusted its orbit and that both of these would have caused massive surface disruption as the earth's crust rotated leaving the liquid core behind creating huge friction and forces which would easily have separated the continents. We then looked at the age of all of this. We looked at the dilemma of the God's word phenomenon, people who use the Bible as a, as a truncheon to beat uh, people into belief, and we looked at the reverse of problem of people who use intellectualism to beat people into belief with absolutely contrasting and conflicting theories. We looked at the problem of the clean, sharp corners of the rocks on top of the hills and concluded that it was unlikely that these rocks had been standing there for millions, let alone billions of years. We then examined the ancient book of Genesis, which purports to provide a historical account of a flood and a ship built by a man called Noah, which landed in the mountains of Ararat in Turkey. We reported that that ship has been found submerged in a mud flow with dimensions that exactly agree with the Genesis account and situated in a location that exactly agrees with the Genesis account. We reported that uh, modeling of that, what had been found, indicated that the vessel was completely capable of withstanding the sort of flood event that we were talking about, albeit extremely uncomfortably. Given that we had such a close correlation with the Genesis account, we made the suggestion that Genesis is a broadly reliable historical text and that we could at least place some reliance on the approximate dating arrived at in Genesis. We also looked at the genealogies in, in Genesis and found that they correlated with Irish genealogies and we also found that Egyptian timelines supported the dating of a flood around about 2345 uh, before Common Era or before Christ. We noted also that the technology inherent in the Great Pyramid was more advanced than we have today. We looked at other complications, evidence of a global nuclear war about 4,000 years ago, which would have corrupted any steady-state nuclear decay theory and also explained Australopithecus and other uh, cavemen as being deformed fugitives from a nuclear war. We postulated the total destruction of the surface of the Earth gave a completely new spin to global warming, explained the rising of sea levels and the drowning of cities, explained that all races traced their origin from a single family, that evolution over millions of years was invalid. We looked at the question of what is the origin and purpose of man and referred to a document which is on the CD at the end of the set. From there we moved on to signs of judgment. We noted that Genesis also claimed that the flood was a result of a judgment by the Creator, Yah, the eternally self-existing, commonly referred to as the Lord, who said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. We saw also in the book of Exodus an account of a judgment on the army of Egypt and seen that that had also been found with chariot wheels and human and horse body parts, skeletons on the floor of the Red Sea where Exodus said it would be. We saw that Sodom and Gomorrah spoke, so, that Sodom and Gomorrah were turned to ash by brimstone in Genesis and that those had been found in exactly where Genesis said they would be, also as a judgment by the Almighty. We found the split rock at Horeb and the fire-blackened mountain described in Exodus, again where Exodus says it will be, 
fire black and mountain where the Almighty descended and spoke to the people and gave them the ten laws, the first one of which is, I am Yah, the eternally self-existing, the Almighty One who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other mighty ones before me. And we looked briefly at the other commandments. We noted that Moses was allegedly given two tablets of stone with these ten commandments written on them, which he placed in a, coven in, in a container which he called the Ark of the Covenant, which was subsequently elaborately gilded with gold and which disappeared about 597 BC. We noted that that uh, Ark of the Covenant had been found in 1982 by Ron Wyatt and that this was under an execution site which corresponded very closely with biblical accounts. And we noted that this correlated with the accounts of the death of a man called Yeshua, the anointed of Yah, or Jesus Christ, as you may know him. We noted that this was an extremely powerful confirmation of earlier writings and that it was strong evidence of judgment to come. And so we concluded that we found numerous signs of judgment in the past, the flood and the ship of Noah, the fly, fire blackened mountain, the execution site with the earthquake crack, the Ark of the Covenant with blood on the mercy seat containing the tablets of stone with the ten laws engraved on them and suggested that this formed a basis for careful introspection and self-examination. We then looked at indications of coming judgment in the book of Revelation, which said that anyone not found written in the book of life would be cast into the lake of fire, and other verses which speak of being cast into the lake of fire. We concluded that uh, with all the billions of suns that have been detected in the universe, uh, eternal hellfire is entirely possible. We also noted that it was claimed that there were great rewards, including sitting on a high throne with Yeshua for eternity. We posed the question, where will you spend eternity, and referred to the document which is on the CD as part of this DVD set. We then asked the question, where did the water come from and where did it go? We looked again at that dirty snowball in space and postulated that one of those could have flown by the planet dropping chunks of ice which melted and formed rain or else that one might have collided with the planet. We looked at the ice object that had seemingly struck Mars and noted that that was more than sufficient water to completely drown the planet. We noted the disruption of the surface of the Earth that would have happened if the Earth had tilted on its axis. So to wrap up, my conclusions. Is the planet inherently, internally unstable that all of this could just have happened? Or is the planet stable except when impacted by external forces? Was there an impact or near miss by a comet or other astronomical object? Is our universe stable or unstable? Do we exist in an environment of unplanned, unmanaged, pervasive, progressive self-inventing evolution, or do we exist in a context of an environment that is subject to a higher creative agency, an engineer, a creator? Will we live the rest of our lives as we please with no consequences, or is there a day of judgment where we will all be called to account for the way we've lived our lives? Is there a penalty for failure, a lake of fire? Are there thrones in a place of great beauty which are a reward for faithful service to the Creator? Are there places in between? Does it matter how we live? I ask you to draw an engineering conclusion. What makes sense to you? Please weigh up all I've shown you and all I've said. Please do not decide based on a whim or what someone else has said. You're an intelligent being. Exercise your intellect to understand the issues and make an informed choice. Make a rational, practical decision, one that you're willing to defend no matter what, something you can hang your hat on. Do you choose to live life at the throw of a dice or do you design against failure and have a robust view of where you're going? 
Steady state theories cannot explain what we've seen in this video. Massive external forces have to have been applied. A massive external source of water seems essential. There are large chunks of ice in space. An astronomical object or ice comet seems to explain the situation. Is there a better theory? I don't know one. What do you think? Was there a flood? Did the flood just happen? Was there a judgment? Will there be another judgment? Where will you spend eternity? My conclusion, there was a massive hydraulic and tectonic event. It was triggered by an externally generated instability. It took place relatively recently. There is a creator, there's looming judgment, possibly within a thousand years or much sooner. The Ten Commandments will form the basis of judgment. We each have a choice, which ranges from eternal hellfire to a high throne for eternity. What do you choose today? In the end notes, you will find a variety of information that has a bearing on what you might do once you've considered this information. A high-level explanation of various religious spiritual principles that it is important to know about. Please watch this section as well and read the documents that are contained on the CD that accompanies this DVD. Some acknowledgements, Jonathan Gray for his information and material, Ron Wyatt, who found many of the key archaeological finds referred to here, my parents, my children, others who have been involved in my life. People who've supplied material in various shapes and forms. Uh, particular thanks to Fritz Holscher and Still Point Country Haven for their venue, which is really nice if you'd like to use it. Dave Haraway, who took the photographs. I can be contacted at james at etimin.org or at any of the contact details that are on the screen. Jonathan Gray can also be contacted. I would like to dedicate this presentation to our Creator, the Lord, better, more accurately referred to as Yah, the eternally self-existing, who is the reason for our existence and the source of our being and who desires our fellowship with Himself for eternity, in whom we live and move and have our being. May Yah, the eternally self-existing, make His face to shine upon you and give you His peace. It's been said that if you do not act on new information within 48 hours, you probably never will. I suggest that right now you write down your top three action points before you move on. Make sure that your theory of geolog geological and topographic formation and your religious beliefs are like a bridge designed not to fail.